It's time! Apologise to me! That's the name of the podcast, people. Episode 9, my name is Martin Devlin, I work for the platform. He is this, he is that. And some people even call him a twat. Mark Watson joins us. You should do gangster. Hey, now, straight face, I've got a dad joke just to lighten things right, up. Okay. Straight face, straight not face. allowed to laugh, okay? Okay, right. okay, okay. okay. What do you call a monkey with dynamite? I should know this, shouldn't I? A baboom. I just thought that was different, Martin. We are talking All Blacks <laughs> versus Australia. You did smile. We're talking Darcy Swain. Do you get We're it, talking the All Whites. The Ranfilly Shield, is it still relevant? It is to us Wellingtonians. And also Netball. Just, just. Jamaica don't want to play this series. Just can this and get it over with now. Uh, Sorry, are we talking about the netball because you've suddenly become about box ticking and we just need to bring some balance and we need to have female sport on the show? Are you talking about netball because this actually is a joke and it's a genuine story? I'm talking about netball. I just want clarity. I just want clarity. Okay, okay, that's fine. Absolutely genuine story. Okay, that's fine. I'm with you then. This is the tiny Jamison trophy leading to the Constellation Cup. And do I need to explain how important that is in New Zealand sport? It's a hell of a lot more important, the Constellation Cup, than obviously the Chapel Hadley is to a bunch of cricketers who don't give us stuff. Don't even get me started on that, mate. I can't believe they just named the T20 squad and Martin Guptill and Kane Williamson both make that side. What haven't we learned, Martin? What haven't we learned? Well, we let's got... be conservative. No, well, we let's learned... be boring. Let's play percentages. Let's have a boys club. Let, what, what, what we've learned is that once you're in, you cannot get out. And Kane Williamson has... Kane Williamson runs New Zealand cricket more oh. than David White runs New Zealand cricket. Kane Williamson dictates and decides everything. Apologise to me! Let's talk about the All Blacks versus Australia, though. And the big question is, does Roger Tuivasa-Shek start? I mean, that's that's the one well, question. What do you do now? How do you how okay. do you select that back line? Okay, so what we have said is that they've always believed that Geordie Barrett is the best fullback, okay? So in my opinion, if they believe that, they leave Geordie Barrett at fullback because if you're moving him to second five, you suddenly weaken fullback. Well, you're making three and changes suddenly, at once, And aren't suddenly you? you then weaken two positions. You don't have your best fullback and you no longer have your best second five-eight. Now, Roger Tuivasa Shek, if they don't play him, they've basically destroyed this guy's career this year. He's played very little rugby, all in the name of development, being in the environment. Well, you've put him into the environment, you picked him. Now, if you picked him because you felt that he was a legitimate and genuine All Black, or did you pick him because it was a good PR move and there was a bit of heat around the All Blacks, there was a bit of heat around rugby, and everybody wanted it, so let's appease the fans, let's put him in. Um... And so they've got to start Roger Tuivasa Sheik at second five eight. They've got no choice, in my opinion. If they don't, if they don't, you don't take him on the end of the year tour either, because clearly, in your mind, he's not good okay, enough. So what they'll say to us is they'll say that, uh, as they said last time, that there's things he's working on. Is he really there? Uh, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll, uh, I totally agree with you. I think that this has got to be the opportunity. The All Blacks. Uh, haven't won the rugby championship at the moment, so this game is still very important. We've got to, if if, if we want to. Can I ask you this though, Martin? I, I don't actually care about winning the rugby championship. Well, no one does. Mate. I just no care does. about the winning All Blacks winning every test. Yeah, That's okay. The well, only thing. Okay, well, we, you know, we lose to Argentina and win the rugby championship, or we've lost to Argentina at home. As far as I'm concerned, it's a failed season. It's a failed well, season. Well, of course, the season is a failed season regardless. Okay, correct. It doesn't. You know, if we win. From here on in out, and we win all five remaining tests of the year, we beat Australia, Japan, Wales, Scotland, and England at Twickenham, we will have resurrected a failing season. Correct. Okay. Which but, will emphasise the importance of the two coaches that have been brought in. But you can't, you, you, you cannot lose to three different countries in a year as an all-black side, create the most unwanted history that we've ever had by historic series and home losses against Ireland and Argentina and then pretend at the end of the year that everything is okay. All we, look, at the moment, I believe that if we're, say, 30 to 70%, if we rewrite the ship and win five in a row, we get up just over 55% and we will tick a box and it, say the All Blacks I, did okay. I, I, I will say this. if they, As you said, if we win Japan, Wales, Scotland, England then my mind shift changes completely and I think we are on track. But hey, look, just going back to that, it's interesting, isn't it, how the entire discussion the last week's been about the referee, it's been about whether it was right or wrong. I've got a feeling that if it had been the other way around, New Zealand wouldn't be No, as, we wouldn't be talking we about that. We'd be about talking about but, blowing a 31, 13, 18 point, point lead. Mate. The guy that's enjoyed all of this more than anybody is your mate Fozzie. It is Fozzie, you and him. Are, you, you do call him Fozzie, don't you? Yeah. I do. Your mate Fozzie, oh, yeah, yeah, he's loving about... this because no one's actually focusing on the fact that the All Blacks basically lost this test match 
that another All Black loss. Well, no, Mark, when you look at the scoreboard, and that's the only thing that counts afterwards, is that we did win the test, we got out of jail, we got damn lucky. But that's sport, and sometimes you take your luck. But you're exactly right. Look, a minute to go in that test match, Ian Foster was a dead goldfish in a bowl. I was yeah, texting the, you, ready to yeah, go. Because you were going to get me on the program. And so, and so, at 30, I got a text from you at 33.13 saying, oh, don't say that, don't what say time that, can that, I that, phone you tomorrow, that, that, Watto? What I, time I, can I, I phone I, you I, tomorrow? I, 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 look, I did. And, and, I was, and the, this morning I was having coffee with a good mate, and I was asking him about it. I said, well, and we were still talking about it. And he said, can I whisper to you that at 31.13 I went to bed because... um. She was saying, why don't you come to bed? And we'd already won this test match. And I woke up the next morning and it was just all hell and broken loose. I think a lot of us felt like that. I actually sat there in front of the TV thinking, okay, I've got a minute. I'm going to watch this for one minute more and then I'm going because we've actually nailed this test. And they scored that try mm. and that kept me. But look, let's go back hey, to. Hey, it. the moral of the story is if you ever get, you find yourself in a situation like that, you go to bed with her. Go to bed with her. That's the moral of the story <laughs> because that never comes back, okay? That never. 2004, Atatürk Stadium, Liverpool 3 0 down half time against AC Milan, and the rest is history. Hey, look, I'll, I'll go you back to 1999 in Barcelona uh, when George Best, the beloved George Best, RIP, at 1 0. Uh, when the 91st minute wandered down, down the stairs wandered down the stairs that's right and actually thought by the time he got to the bottom that we had lost and Bayern Munich had won it then he looks at the cup and it's got red and white ribbons on it and thought what the hell had happened all he heard was the roar of the crowd and he just thought that it was game over let's go back to Roger though there is no better opportunity this weekend in my mind because you've got Christy Bowden Roger and Rico if you're going to play Roger I would start that all black, that blues, all black back line, and I would give him an opportunity and under the exact right circumstances that he is used to. And why wouldn't you do that? Because at the moment, we've got Aaron Smith plays for 50 or 60 minutes, okay? That's all he can actually do at the moment. Um, Richie Mawanga still, to me, has not cemented that position yet. I still think this is a Carlos Spencer, Andrew Mertens thing's going on. It's almost like every second game that the other guy looks better and that guy looks better and you don't know. But I think if we are going to play Roger, I think you're right. You don't make four different changes to the back line. Right. You make one. And unfortunately, with the injuries and that at the moment, he he yeah. is now elevated to first cab off the ring. If those injuries hadn't happened, if Quinn Tupai hadn't got injured, I'd say you had to play Tupai because yep. he was the first guy off the, off the rank on the bench, right? But you go back and you look at the great midfield combinations. Nono and Smith, Wellingtonians, play together a lot. You go back um, you go back to Walter Little, Bunce, North Harbour, Auckland, the Blues, played together a lot. And so you've got, as you said, you've got a perfect situation where potentially, potentially you could start Bowden Barrett at first 5'8". You've got Christie at halfback. You've got Roger Tuivasa Sheik at second 5'8". You've got Awani outside of him. There is your Blues back line. Your blues a Blues back line that With functions Caleb really, really well no, Caleb, all year. Caleb on the left wing. So there's five of them. Then you've got Will Jordan keep him at oh, When you said Caleb, I was thinking Caleb Ralph. I thought, not really. Please don't bring back Caleb Ralph. Uh, but you, you, of course, you're talking about Abbott Grammar's finest and Caleb Clark. All right, then. So... If Roger starts, the only other change is going to be Artie comes in off at the seven. Artie, ca- oh, well, he's got to start at seven. Kane ain't available. Kane's missing this because of the concussion issue. Artie has to start in the seven well, see, jersey. That's not decided yet, actually. As a he matter of fact, he has to start in the seven Kane, jersey. Sam Kane's made a remarkable recovery. But you know why they don't want to play Artie in the seven jersey because they don't want to find out what everybody else knows that he's the best seven in the country, and therefore put additional pressure on the fact whether Kane is still good yeah, enough see, to be this in this all-black team. See, this, is, what I, this is the problem. This is the Apologise to Me podcast with Mark Watson. You lay a conspiracy theory upon conspiracy theory. Not only did the aliens land on top of six Barrett, seven Papali'i, eight Savir. I'm getting this message through from the window on the other side. What about that for a, a start? Who do you have at eight? He has, he has Artie at eight. He plays Papali'i at seven. And Barrett at six. Hey, can we, we... We're familiar with psychology and psychiatry 101. Should we do that whole... Close your eyes. Breathe in. Tied in. Tied out. Tied in. Tied in. He needs some mindfulness, that young man. Well, what do you do Delusional. with Papali'i? What do you do with Papali'i? Off the bench. Hasn't played enough rugby. Apologise to me! Let us move on to Swain's punishment, and that gets decided tonight. And, you know, this is absolutely typical of how uh, world rugby operates. They have diluted and diluted this. They've kept it going another day, another day. It was meant to be Tuesday. Now it's Wednesday. Now now the decision won't come out till Thursday. And his lawyers will get up there tonight, and they'll talk about how his childhood was this and that, and he came from a broken home, and it's been such a hard road, and rugby is a thing that survived him. They'll talk about a lot of stuff. Sorry, I didn't realise Jacinda Ardern was his lawyer. But this is the truth, mate. You know this is going to happen, okay? Darcy Swain is a rugby 
thug. That's all there yep. is to yep. it. We all know that. Now, regardless of whether or not you can prove intent, which you can never improve, oh, it was you intent. can never prove. It was intent. He wrapped his arm. Yeah, that, that is not an instinctive thing. An instinctive it's thing not is instinctive. sometimes That's when you go I'm slightly high in a tackle yeah. and it's in a split he second. He had enough time to actually. you put your arm out in a, in a close, you know, almost like a. And get the swinging arm Yeah, you get the like old clothesline and it's just, it's almost just. It happens just in a second. Purely in a split second. It? Who this was it? wraps his arm around and then plays his like he's trying to actually snap no, it was the a, it leg. Was a wrestling move. Should Look, be out for six to six months to a year. Should be out for the same duration that two players. Yeah, out totally for. agree. Look, Tarvel, I think, was the guy, wasn't it? When you when you micro analyze that one, where where the guy moved slightly at the end of the tackle and ended up running into him, he gets a red card and and gets and gets suspended. That to me is a situation where it's got to be looked at in real time and everything else. And and I didn't believe that that punishment was actually appropriate on the field or off the field. But this one with Darcy Swain. There's no question about this. You've also got to look at form. The head, but the guy loses his head. This is his problem. He loses his rag. And I understand this because I've gone through a lot of this in my own life. And when that brain snaps on you, mm. you are capable of doing things that you wouldn't normally yeah. do. And that's what happens yeah. to Swain on a rugby field. I believe that Dave Rennie sends him out there as a wrecking ball and sends him out there to cause absolute chaos on the field. Yeah. And this guy's but, brain is so small. Yeah. He's smaller than a brontosaurus. He doesn't have control of himself, yeah, but, but, and that's what we but saw. that's also, too, perhaps the weakness Oh, you won't criticise no, Dave Rennie, perhaps, though, will no, you? I was going to no, say, this is you the weakness, will you? Because this is all the weakness your criticism Dave is towards Foster, isn't it? Because you're just so self-obsessed about Ian Foster, you won't cut the guy a little bit of slack every now and again after he coached a remarkable Bledisloe Cup win against Australia. From the depths of hell, we came back, Watto. That's about the most intelligent thing you've ever actually said, Martin. But no, Dave Rennie, if you're going to take a thug and put him on the field and think you're going to get away with it these days with every single damn camera angle, gone are the days of at the bottom of the ruck and giving the old testicles and the old scrope Christmas a little hole. bit of a twist. It. You can't get away with anything these days. But look, does it really surprise you? I was thinking about this on the way in. And I've said to this to you before, mate, when it comes to the Australians, and I love the fact that they're talking about the referee. They don't bother bringing up the Darcy Swain and the fact it should have been a red card or in Australia. You should have been down to 13. Else. For a large chunk of this game. But look at it. I mean, I was going to say this Ned Kelly, Chopper Reed, national heroes in Australia. Yeah, it just are. sums up their psyche. You go back, you know, and then they are complaining about the refereeing decision. You go back and um, Mike Whitney, 1986. Michael Bryle against Frank yeah, Bunn. No, but, but oh, you, Whitney, no, but you go and you look at the umpiring decisions that stopped New Zealand from winning that Boxing Day test. You go, you have a look at Michael Clark and their behaviour in South Africa with Sandpaper Gate. 2007, when we won the Rugby League World Cup. Who gets man of the match? Darren lock here. Yeah, I mean, you look at Australian Hobart, sport. Hobart test against, you look at Australia, and David they Warner are just such, bad, such sore losers. hypocrites yeah, and are. such bad losers. And it doesn't surprise me that you get a guy like Darcy Swain and it's a part of his DNA, mate. Yeah. It is okay. a part okay. of his so DNA. And Dave Rennie, if you think somehow this is a clever selection, then yes, Dave, you need to go and maybe just have a look at yourself in the mirror. Okay, what's his punishment then? I agree, it has to be as, long as, be as long as Tupac is out, but it won't be. But what will he get? I'd get say he gets, he gets four weeks. And and two of those weeks will be reserved games, games for Randwick against somebody, and he'll be on the end of but year guess two what? playing he came every single out, He's just right. devastated with of course what he did. He's devastated, he's devastated, he's devastated with what he did. Of course he did. Absolutely devastated. Well, you, you have be. I emphasised how devastated but he is? you can be, Darcy. But the problem is, is it doesn't matter, mate. What's going to be more devastating is the fact you won't play for six months, just like the opponent whose leg you just about crushed. He could go and play in the backyard with the Barretts. Apologise to me! All Whites together. versus Australia. Let's talk about that now. And these two mammoth games that are coming up, um, a, a an Eden Park crowd, which is hopefully going to be a sellout crowd. It Winton won't Roof be, will join it us won't on the be, it Mate, there'll be, be 30,000 people there, you know, which will be brilliant. That'll be one of the biggest football crowds in, in New Zealand history. Is that how it's targeting? Well, apparently, according to the ticket sales. Well, I'm not, I'm not here to, the, I mean, I, I would go and watch Chris you're gonna Wood. You're going to go? I would watch Chris Wood. Why wouldn't you? And I would like to Mate, go and say goodbye. it's been 10 years since we last and, still played against Australia for match. How like ridiculous to, But I'd this? like to go and, and also, you know, clearly an opportunity to see Winston Reid, who people just don't get. This guy played for more than 220 games he for West He kept the Premier League side. He kept in the Premier League side. We've had Winston Reefer, We've had Ryan Nelson. We've got Chris Wood at the moment. We've had um, Winston Reid. And there's been a few others in between scattered here and there. But do you realise how good you've got to be to yeah, play in the Premier it. League? Do yeah. you realise how many people play football? It is the world's biggest game. And here we've got a kid like Winston Reid out of Takapuna originally. A guy, a guy out of Cambridge, you know. Winton Roofer, a Māori boy out of Wellington that's yeah, gone on and it. done it, mate. Mm. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. But you know why? 
And, and this is the disappointing thing with New Zealand football. And this is, you know, this should be an automatic sellout. This should be big. And, and I heard well, we haven't we, played we were for talking, ten years. Mate. We haven't played yeah, for ten I years. Mean, but part of the problem is this is the problem when you continue to play in Oceania, hoping for that, yes. hoping for the one-off game to get it to the World true. Cup. Jump across to Asia. I think you know, go back to 1982, and that was a genuine road to the World Cup. And we had to pull off these miracles against the One likes of the Saudi other. Arabia, Kuwait, Kuwait, who were actually good. We had to beat Australia and knock them out as well, yeah. mate. Remember? And, and they. And because of these great moments, there was just this wave of nationalism. Every single one of those players was a national hero. hero. They were. Every time Mount Smart, it was a sellout. And that legacy lived on. Plus also, now, now we campaign. know nothing about our All Whites no, team. But it was a campaign. This is the other problem. We know is nothing there. about our All Whites team until the one-off game yeah, against Costa, Puerto Rico. Yeah, Costa, because no Costa one's Rico. watching them beat yeah. Funnel. No, right. no one's watching yeah. them beat but, hey, Tahiti. But the, but, the, but, the, but the problem is Australia jumped it and they got into Asia, which is the best thing that they ever did. Mm. Uh, now, of course, because it's FIFA and because so much money Money gets doled and dished around all of these countries. There is no way Oceania is going to vote itself out of existence. And the fact that the World Cup is now going to involve 148 teams from 2026 yeah, or not, I mean, it, it is crushing for New Zealand yeah. football. The men's game, we have to be in that Asian conference to actually improve. Uh, I totally agree with you. Uh, no, no but, question. But it's sort of a little bit like, it, it's a bit like New Zealand cricket selling it sold a spark. Okay, you take the money, but you lose your That's audience. It. We're taking the money, but we've actually lost all of our profile around the men's game. I don't actually know who is in the All Whites until it actually comes to the well, one big game. Because they're not we household names. We should have the likes of Chris Wood, the Winston Reeds, and these players at the forefront. And take that All White who's maybe playing for the Wellington Phoenix, who suddenly scores the goal in World Cup qualifying against Japan and Japan because we've upset the Japanese. And a week later, we've suddenly upset the might, the might of Korea. And then we've beat Australia and suddenly. Like 82, yeah, it's the it's forefront. It. It is. It's the forefront. And hey, so you have to weigh up the intangibles, Martin. No, you've got to have Martin. an administration with vision, and we don't. We have an administration where the CEO comes in, and the first thing he does is tries to paint himself with the KPI box and the and the Jacinda wokeness and go, oh, let's change the name of the All Whites. That's the only thing Andrew Pragnall has come out and done since he's been the CEO, is wanted to change the name of the team. I mean, since then, mate, you're the you the CEO of New Zealand football. You get on every free trip that FIFA has. You get to go to every Champions League game. You get to go to every. You sit on every board. You'll get a nice cushy job over there, I'm sure, on a committee at some stage. But what are you doing for us lately? After this, there are no all whites fixtures for six months. And the guy says there's no money. There's what do you mean there's no money? How? What the hell are you spending the money on New Zealand football? We don't. The all whites are your shop window. If they don't play. There is no New Zealand football. It's as simple as that. Danny Hayes not going to hang around, is he? Why would you? Why would you? I don't think he will. I think after this, look, if there are no fixtures for the national team for six months, he doesn't have a job. He doesn't have anything to do. Your job, Andrew Pragnall, as CEO, is to get the New Zealand men's team playing. But you, but I you, mean, we've got the women's is already sorted because they got the World Cup next year. So, so they were actually on that train already. You don't have to do anything. And, and don't, for a second, Andrew, put your hand up and think that you've got anything to do with that. Yeah. FIFA awarded the World Cup down here. You didn't have a part of that. Nothing New Zealand did had a part of that. We've got it. It's a gift. And if you cock this up, well, you can't cock it up because yeah. we've got the World oh, Cup in our but, backyard. But in terms of the men's team, how the hell are they meant to improve? How are they meant to galvanise well, a fan base? Uh, uh, look, how are they actually meant to create well, any kind of interest when they never bloody play? Yeah, and so it's all very well. Oh, we got to the World Cup. Yeah, but what are we going to do when we're going to get there? Park the bus, play a catenaccio style defence, and hopefully no, hang on. Danny doesn't do that. Danny and, Hayes no, got no, his team saying, playing historically, well. And hopefully hang on for a little bit of a draw because that's the that's level the we're at. That's the old school now, of now, I'll tell you this, Martin, having done a lot of coaching. So you take swim, swimming as an example. And so you've got three lanes, an easy, medium, and fast lane. The fastest swimmer in your fast lane over 400 metres is, say, swimming 4 minutes 30. Everybody pushes to 4 minutes 30, and that's Oceania at the moment. Suddenly, you bring some people in who can swim 4 minutes 15 and 4 minutes. Everybody that was swimming 4.30, including that fastest swimmer, starts pushing to 4.15, starts pushing to 4 minutes. Of course they do. And that is simply that's, called yeah, that, evolution. Yes. And that is exactly the reason why we should be playing in Asia it would force us to lift our standard on a more regular basis. Yeah, the been, games have greater meaning. You know, and you, even if we don't qualify for the World Cup, but we've beaten Japan yeah, look, along the way, you're, we've you're beaten Australia along the way. You're talking bloody nonsense. You're talking about it. Look, New Zealand sports administrators, what is the main object? A political arm of the Labour government. Thank you. And all they want to do is retain their cushy jobs. The last thing they want to do is actually... Um, disrupt yeah, but, what but, is happening or, or, yeah, but, or completely if, break down what is yeah, actually hey, the situation hey, at the moment minute, and start again. If they again. don't sell out Eden Park and if they don't get regular fixtures as Australia, when they sit down at the board level, the PowerPoint presentation also increase in um, gender diversity. We've got more gender diversity amongst our coaching um, That's exactly what they're doing. Boy, we're doing really well. Let's give us a, let's give us a, a high five. You know, this is hugely, this is the biggest grassroots sports in the country football. 
And yet at the top level, it is amateur hour. Totally, mate. It is appalling. Totally, mate. What, what football do you watch? I watch... All overseas stuff. I watch everything in the football. Oh, no, I watch the Phoenix as well. I, I like to watch their games. Why? I, well, because I'm a stupid damn fan, mate. Are you? For no reason. Do you also support the Warriors, mate? Yes. Should I do the loser What's dance? What's wrong with me? Should I do the loser dance my kids? Do you put that little L on your forehead, mate? Apologise to me! Final topic then. Netball. Two men talking netball, Watto. Why are we even bothering with this tiny Jamison trophy now when the Jamaicans can't get their passports organised, can't get yeah, into this Yeah, but it's up to New Zealand netball to get this sorted, mate. When a team comes down here, it's actually up to the host nation to actually put well, We can't place. control if they don't have their passports or if they've forgotten where they put their homework. I mean, Honestly, it is so, laughable. So, so we've got a hybrid, basically a hybrid Jamaican team, no, which is going to be made... But yeah, but they're going to make it up with some New Zealand uh, players well, no, or man, some fringe players point? here. Can the thing and get the New Zealand men's team playing against the Silver Ferns because they seem to have uh, a real difficulty playing against that side and it's probably the best preparation they could have with playing playing the, but, the Australian but you look at You look at the, the way we nipples in at the moment. I mean, we have been pretty damn average for a long time. The one statistical outlier, and it's a big one, clearly was that World Championship in 2019. But you look at recent Commonwealth Games Come before, Consolation you look at the way it, England mate. are beating us, Jamaica are now starting to beat us, and we sort of sit there, and I go back to this. Isn't it funny? You look at rugby, you look at league, you look at the cricket, and you look at the netball. The four sports that get all the coverage, the four sports that grab all of the money, the four sports that cr- cr- cry the loudest about how damn hard it is. Damn hard. How damn hard damn it all hard. is are the four sports that are underachieving at the moment. Are we talking about Sam Gaze, two mountain bike world championships, the Commonwealth Games? Spends all his time overseas, doesn't get paid. But oh no 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 no! But you don't get it. You don't get it, Marty. You don't get it. It's not as intense or as global as Next netball. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be talking about how my man Ian Foster went back to back against Australia, clinched the rugby oh, championship, thought... and retained the Bledisloe. Yeah, but and you will have minute. nothing to but say. You're going to have three Barrett brothers studying them. Have we talked about the Barretts today? Devlin. Down goes Fraser. Down goes Fraser. The platform.